Yo, happy Thanksgiving. If you're not in the US, it's not Thanksgiving, but here in the US, it is Thanksgiving, celebrating Turkey Day, lots of food, lots to be thankful for that day that we try to remember what we're grateful for in our lives and really make it about that. And then also we do so by stuffing our face, watching football and falling asleep on the couch. But it's an American tradition. So if you guys have ever wondered what it's like, um, it's just pretty much that. Eating a lot, overeating, and then watching football. I'm gonna make sure the mic is on. All right, I wanna do this Q&A because, wow, we said we were. So, been a crazy week on social media and it has just left me feeling kind of icky inside. Just feeling like not, not, not who I always strive to be, but just also just social media can be one of those things that just sucks sometimes. It's great. I wouldn't have the opportunity to do what I do without social media, but sometimes um, I hate it to be honest. And I don't hate many things, but sometimes I hate social media and what it brings out in people. But we said we we're gonna do this Q and A. We're not gonna pull, you know, any punches. We're gonna try to, you know, answer everything truthfully and honestly. Well, we're not gonna try to, we are going to, because that's what we do. And yeah, so first question. Steve, when are you gonna come down to Houston again um, and collab with Christian Guzman? I love, I love me some CG. I love Christian and I think that we've been trying to collab. It's always kind of tough with the Alpha Elite, Gymshark, you know, we have our events, they have their events and um, I hate that it feels kind of combative and there's no reason for that. Nobody is, you know, nobody's really, it's just kind of the way it's, it's, it's been, but um, I like Christian and I think he's just a good example of, of you know, what hard work and like just being on top of your game and you know treating it like a job in the fitness industry can do. So props to Christian, I'd love to collab with him again. Um, books that have given you a fresh, fresh perspective that have inspired you. Um, man, I'm trying to think. Right now I'm reading a book called Case for Christ and it's actually, it looks like, it looks like a lawyer would look at. Um, really breaks down a lot of things historically, fact checking and like uh, brings a case for, you know, all of that biblical stuff. And I think that's important for me because that's kind of where, if I don't have that in my life, I feel like kind of, kind of floundering. Some people might think that that's crazy. Some people might like that. It's really not up for any discussion other than the fact that it helps me out. So, um, another book, I'm trying to think, you know, I've read, I do a lot more on audiobooks and I try at times to get away from like the, you know, the self meaning books, self help books and just read for fun because reading is great, but it's really easy to start a book. Like all those books over there, really easy to start a book and then not finish it. So I would like to read more in 2019. Um, I would also like to not text and drive in 2019 and eat slower in 2019. I'm not even, these were put together and I haven't even read any of these, so I'm just coming at you live with these. Um, I'm all or nothing with dieting and I can't seem to stay consistent. Any tips with staying motivated while dieting? This is such a great question. I love this question because I used to be like that with just about everything in my life. I was either all or nothing, all or nothing dieting. I was either gonna eat perfectly or I was gonna go binge eat. This actually kind of is a sequel to the previous question because I believe they go hand in hand in terms of like I'm reading that book about Christ and I, we're not perfect beings. Nobody on this earth is perfect. We're all going to sin if you call it sin. We're all going to mess up if you just if you don't believe in God. And you think we just mess up. We're all going to do things that we shouldn't be doing. We're human. That's the point to me of being here on this earth is to is to not try to be perfect, but to try to do our best. So with dieting, it's the same thing. It's so easy. The more you hold on tight to that feeling of I'm all or nothing. I need to be perfect the more you're gonna find that you binge eat, the more you're gonna find that you beat yourself up, you skip workouts because you're not, you, you didn't work out the previous day. That all or nothing mentality has gotten me into a lot of highs and a lot of lows because the lows, you spiral down. You know, if you don't eat right today, 
the week's waste, the month's waste, or you know, today's waste, tomorrow's waste. And all of a sudden, it's been week after week, and you're feeling bad about yourself because you can't stay on your diet. And what I find is sometimes is doing the best that you could do. If you're on vacation, if you're traveling, or even if you just had a crappy day and you need something, it's all about doing the best that you could do. And sometimes that means having a little bit of ice cream. Sometimes that means, you know, having a little bit more macros. What I would say, if you do track macros, even track those, those days that you don't eat according to your plan. And some days, throw the plan out the window. But you have to allow yourself to not be perfect. You have to allow yourself to realize you're human. It's only human to do a lot of those things. It's only human to want to eat sugar. It's only human to do those things. But when you beat yourself up and tell yourself you can't have them, automatically our brain starts working in a way that starts wanting something because it's taboo. Um, so I think the, your, your first mind, your, your first real big paradigm shift in your way of thinking is to change how you feel about yourself when you eat those things. <laughs> Got two heavy questions here. And I still have, I don't know if it's a cold or allergies. I have allergies in St. George. So if there's anything you guys know for allergies, let me know. Um, thoughts on Chris Bumstead with Courtney so fast. If it's too personal, what is your favorite song to work out to? I kind of did a, a live um, Instagram video on this. Um, Courtney and I broke up months ago. Courtney is a great person. Chris seems like a cool dude. I wish nothing but the best for them. Um, I miss Poppy like crazy. I People have asked a lot about Poppy. I let Courtney take Poppy. Courtney moved to St. George. Um, and I felt like she didn't, well, we both felt like, you know, she needed Poppy in her life to help her get through things. I had my family here as a support system. Courtney didn't have anyone. She, when she moved from here, um, you know, it was like she had invested so much. So. Only the best to those two, and, and hopefully, you know, people will let that shoes die down on social media because it's not a big deal to me. Don't think it's a big deal to them. Why are we still talking about it? So let's just put that to bed and not talk about it anymore. Are you planning on keeping that beard? The plan is to go through No Shave November with it, and I did trim it a little bit yesterday. I have a weak sauce beard, we all know this, um, but having a beard is something that uh, I'm quickly realizing it's itchy and I don't really love it. But when you come in, hey Steve, when you come into Dubai, I think I'll be in Dubai probably late February of next year. Always wanted to go to Dubai. All right, last question. What is the biggest slash most important thing you've learned in the last six months? Um, I think that this is gonna be one thing that I wish I would have learned long ago. And that is uh, to trust your instincts, to trust what you feel like is right deep down inside. I'm the type of person that I second guess every decision I ever make. I am bad at when I feel a certain way, when I know like I have this hunch deep down inside I should do or I shouldn't do something, um, I wait around and I kind of wait for the sign or I wait for my hand to be forced. And that's one thing that I've, I've actually been going to counselor about is because I want to make sure that, hey, see an opportunity or I, I know something is not good for me, get out or go 100% in. And doing what, doing something 100% is the name of the game. I always had, I had this football coach back in the day that said, if you, I don't care if you make a mistake, but make a mistake going 100%. And I think if there's anything I could teach myself long ago, you're not going to make all the right decisions. Stop trying. You know, this whole video we've talked about, you're not going to be perfect. Stop trying. Stop trying. Stop trying. What you can do, though, is right that ship once you've made a wrong decision. We got, you know, if you, if you live a long life, if you live, you know, whatever, 70, 80, 90 years, you're going to make a lot, of, a lot of wrong decisions. Are you going to just live with them because it's hard to correct or change is difficult? Or that minute you feel that, that, that this isn't right, or I need to do that. Are you gonna write that ship? Are you gonna do it and go all the way? And that can mean, you know, if you're wanting to change a career path, if you're in a, in a relationship you shouldn't be, whatever it is, if, if, if you're wanting to move, whatever it is, if you feel that and you think about it, do it. What's the worst that can happen? You go back to what it was before or, or you, you know, you, you, you get that other, that old job or you have to find a new job, 
doubt kills far more dreams than, than failure ever will. Like you fail, get up, do it again. You fail, get up, do it again. You make little corrections, you steer that ship, you, you move accordingly, you know, you, you, you kind of, you're in, you're at least you're in that, that river swimming, you know, like if you're not making any decisions, you're just on the side watching this river go by that maybe you want to jump in and swim in. And that's kind of like life. Jump in, start swimming. And as you start swimming, you'll figure out where you need to go. Not to say you shouldn't have a plan or you shouldn't have goals, but that fear of failure, that fear of the unknown holds, has held me back at times. And I know it holds a lot of you guys back. So I want this channel to be not only fitness stuff, I love that, but I want it to be more, more stuff like this. I want it to be positive. I want it to be a place where people are like, you know what? I resonate with that, Steve. You know, you might not be the biggest, the leanest student in the world. I might not ever compete in the Olympia again. Um, it, it might not line up with the roles and goals of what I want in life. I, could, I can't be as healthy as I want to be and, and compete. It's a struggle for me. I love competing. I love bodybuilding, but there's some things that I don't really like about the aspect, the sport of competing. I'll be 100% honest. I wish they went back to, you know, when I competed as a natural IF, I know a natural um, NGA bodybuilder. It was a polygraph and urinalysis. It was true. There was there was this thing there that was it, it felt pure. Now I feel like you know for me to get on stage, it would take all sorts of things to level the playing field, and it's just I don't want to I don't want to do that right now in my life. So hopefully this this Q and A has been insightful. Maybe it hasn't. If I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. But if anything, I always want to be honest with, with people out there. I'm, I might choose not to talk about things like, you know, my next relationship, I might not put it out there on social media. It's hard, but it's also, I see, you know, how the problems it can create because reading hurtful comments, that's been the hard thing. It hasn't been hard, you know, the last couple of days other than people's comments get to you. And I know they shouldn't. And, and I do a pretty good job of it most of the time of not letting things get to you. But we're all human. We're all imperfect people just trying to figure this world out. And when you realize that, you realize that it's okay to mess up. It's okay to, you know, not eat always according to plan. It's okay to, to not know what you're doing with your life. But jump in, start swimming, and then from there, you'll find your way. So thank you guys for watching this. If you can, subscribe, um, like the video, leave me a comment. If I didn't answer your question, like I said, I'm sorry. We'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it. Stay positive.